You're listening to the Good Food CFO podcast, where we challenge the status quo of the food industry, celebrate good food founders who are building businesses on their own terms, introduce industry disruptors, and are redefining equitability. If you're ready to build your financial confidence and join the good food revolution to change the way the food industry does business, you are in the right place. I'm the Good Food CFO and your host, Sarah Delavan. As a CFO to Good Food founders, I get asked some very big questions like, how can I make my business financially sustainable? Do you see a path to profitability for my business? And even, is this business worth continuing? Other times, founders come to me seeking confirmation. They've got ideas for how to move their business forward, but they aren't sure or they're lacking some confidence in the decisions they're thinking about making, like raising their prices, expanding production, or renting a new facility. In all of these instances, I turn to a profit assessment to provide financial insights into what is happening within a business. And then I work through my three point profitability checklist to determine a path forward for the founder. Today on the podcast, I am going to share that checklist with you and provide some insights and context that you can take away to examine the profitability and create a path forward for your business. Let's get to it. As I mentioned in the intro, founders bring me really big and important questions about their finances and their businesses. And to get clear on what is happening within their business and create a path forward that they can feel confident about, we do a profit assessment. And then we use that profit assessment to go through a three-point profitability checklist. And I'm super excited to talk about that checklist with you today. But before we do that, I want to talk about a few things first. Number one, I want to talk about why I created the profit assessment. I want to talk about why income statements or profit and loss reports don't always provide enough information for you to make business decisions. And I want to talk about three types of profitability you need to have in your business. The profit assessment is something that I created several years ago, and that has evolved over time into what I now consider my most valuable tool. I created it to simplify the process of understanding financial reports and to take what gap accounting offers, which is helpful for taxes and getting financing and funding, and actually make it useful to a business owner who's trying to understand their finances and make decisions. It is the very first step that we take with anyone who's considering becoming a client of Sarah Delavan Consulting so that we're both on the same page about how their business is currently performing and the next steps or areas of focus for our work together. For our active clients, we do rolling 12-month profit assessments every single month to stay informed about their business performance. And most of our Good Food Revolutionary members do a quarterly profit assessment for their own businesses. We use a business's profit and loss statement or P&L as the foundation for our profit assessments because the P&L shows us if a business has produced a profit or not as a result of its operations. And if it's structured well, the P&L also provides insights into where revenue was generated, and when, where, and how money was spent throughout the business operations, mostly. While a profit and loss report provides a lot of insight into how a business is performing, it doesn't offer a complete financial picture of the business. Here's an example. A recent P&L showed that a business was profitable, approximately $40,000 for the last 12 months but they had just $17,000 in the bank. How can that be? Well, the full financial picture of a business isn't told by the P&L alone. We need to also gather information from the balance sheet and your statement of cash flows. Remember, GAAP accounting, which stands for Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, tells bookkeepers and accountants how financial statements must be put together. For example, 
if you take out a loan, your loan income goes on your balance sheet. The spending that you do with that loan money might go on your PL or it might appear on your balance sheet. It depends on what you buy. And your loan repayments, they also go on the balance sheet. So you see in this example that money is coming and going from the bank account, and it's not all reflected on the PL. So the profits that are shown on the PL will really never match the balance in your bank account. Also, for a business whose financials are done on an accrual basis, the ingredient, packaging, and co packer expenses don't show up on the PL when you pay for them. They go to the balance sheet. And when you sell a unit of product, they move over from the balance sheet to the PL. If you want to learn more about cash versus accrual accounting, you can head back to episode 55, where we take a deeper dive into that topic. So why am I sharing all of this with you now? I promise it is not to confuse you, but rather to communicate that we need more than our profit and loss reports to tell us how a business is performing. The PL tells us if our operations are profitable. And when we look at the PL in conjunction with our balance sheet and our statement of cash flows, we can see if our business is profitable. This financial information is not inherently easy to understand. The profit assessment is designed to help pull all the necessary info together into one place so you can analyze your business fully from operational profitability to cash flow to business profitability. I know you've heard me say this before, that a profitable product doesn't equal a profitable business. It is also true that operational profitability doesn't equal business profitability or that you'll have enough cash to continue running and growing your business. You need to look beyond your profit and loss statement to understand the full financial picture of your business. The profit assessment brings together your operational income and operational expenses, your debt repayments, your spending on inventory, your owner's draw, all of it so that you can clearly see the numbers of your business and then work through the three-point profitability checklist to get answers to your biggest questions about your business, as well as where to focus your time and attention to become financially sustainable and profitable. When you've pulled your financial information together, either on your own or with the help of our profit assessment, you can then work your way through the three-point profitability checklist, which is a series of questions that are meant to be worked through in order. The first point on the checklist is, do you have positive real revenue? Real revenue is your income minus your cost of goods sold and inventory assets, which is the value of the raw materials and the finished goods you have on hand. In the past on the podcast, I've simplified this a bit and said that real revenue is income minus COGS, but I want to make it really clear for anybody that's listening who has accrual-based finances that we're also factoring in inventory assets here. Now, your real revenue may not be positive every single month, and that's especially true if you're a cash-based business. But if you look at your finances for a 12-month time frame or on a rolling 12-month basis, ideally, you'll see seven or more positive months, and you've got to see a 12-month total that is positive. If you don't have positive real revenue for a 12-month time frame, the most recent 12 months, stop here. You must do the work to figure out why your real revenue is negative. Is it your product prices? Is it your costs? Is it your labor? Is it the way that you're purchasing and managing inventory? And then implement the necessary changes to create positive real revenue in your business. This is so important because it doesn't matter what you're doing in your business or how fast you're growing. 
if you don't have positive real revenue, you won't be able to achieve financial sustainability and profitability, no matter how much you sell. If you're leveraging debt to operate, it's going to be difficult to repay your debts if you don't have positive real revenue. So again, if you don't have positive real revenue for the last 12 months, focus here and create change. If you do have positive real revenue for the last 12 months, move on to number two in the checklist, which is, are you hitting your prescribed cost of goods sold and profit margin percentages for the sales channels you sell in? Now, this is important because you can have positive real revenue, but still struggle to have a financially sustainable business. We've seen businesses with 4% real revenue. It is very hard to operate when only 4% of your top line revenue is available to you to make new products and to pay for your general operations. I talk about this in a lot of detail in episode 56. It's called Reimagining or Rethinking Cash Flow. I talk about how a 50% gross profit margin means that we have just enough money to produce one more unit of product. It is not enough to also cover our operating expenses, our owner's pay, or any of our debt service. So we need to make sure that we're hitting our optimal gross profit margin and our optimal real revenue percentages in order to achieve financial sustainability and profitability. Now, if you're wondering, wait, how can I have positive real revenue, but it not be high enough to operate? Well, this sometimes happens when you're selling a profitable product, but the margins aren't high enough, or there are additional costs related to producing or selling your products that are reducing your overall real revenue. So you're going to want to check your pricing and confirm that your products are hitting their optimal profit margin percentages in every channel that you sell in. And then you're going to want to ensure that your blended margin is above 50% if you're striving for financial sustainability. Again, episode 56 is a great place to start to dig into this information a bit further. And then we've got a perfect pricing calculator and other tools to help you with this work inside the Good Food CFO community. At this point, you may also examine your production labor costs and how you purchase and manage inventory to ensure that you are maximizing your real revenue. Last but not least, once you've confirmed that you are maximizing real revenue, you're going to look to question number three on the checklist, which is, is your real revenue greater than your operating expenses? As I said earlier, your real revenue is the money that you use to create more units of product and pay for your operating costs, as well as pay down debts, owner's pay, et cetera. If you answer yes to this question, yes, my real revenue is greater than my operating expenses, congratulations, because you have got a profitable business operation. If you answer no to this question, it means that your operations are not profitable and that you're spending more on business operations than you have available. When this happens, we want to examine our operations and ensure that we are spending money only on things that are essential to the running and growing of your business. And that means examining also the return on investment for everything that you spend money on and eliminate anything that doesn't have a positive ROI. When you have positive and optimal real revenue for your business, and you've ensured that you are spending only on essential items that have positive ROI, you are primed for growth. Even if your real revenue isn't greater than your operating expenses right now, If you're answering yes to the first two items on the profitability checklist, you are primed for revenue growth because you now know that there is a path to profitability. And when you sell more, that additional income will trickle down to your profit line. If you aren't answering yes to the first two questions on the checklist, an increase in sales does not mean increased profitability or increased cash flow. So focus on what's happening inside your business 
create change, track your progress, and then focus on growth. If you want support in understanding your financials and analyzing your business according to the three-point profitability checklist, we have got a new and improved profit assessment course now available on the Good Food CFO website and inside the community. We've made the course process quicker and easier than ever and are now offering more tools to help you understand what the numbers are telling you and how to identify where to focus your attention within your business to improve cash flow and profitability. Good Food Revolutionary members get free access to this course and weekly CFO office hours with me to discuss your findings, strategize next steps, and check in on your progress. Visit thegoodfoodcfo.com to enroll today. As always, I want to thank you for joining me here today. I'll be back with a brand new episode in two weeks. 